Welcome to We're Not Afraid of the Dark. I'm Ben. I'm joined with my brother Adam and my fiance Ashley and mm. Adam's girlfriend Kayla. Hello. Hey, how are you guys coming on set a date, by the way? We have a date. What yeah. you do? Yeah. Why the fuck did I know? You did, you did know. know. Wait, wait, it's not my calendar. No, no one said anything to me. Uh, is we it Cinco de Mayo? We, it is. Cinco de Mayo. Thank 2019. you. 2019. Uh, That's a Sunday. Yep. Cool. I used to uh, DJ that, that day. I had to play I a bunch of Hispanic music. Well, guess what? The anniversary because I don't want a new one. <laughs> All right. So on Sunday? <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. Yeah. Because this, this May was too soon. All right. This is, this is obviously new to me. <laughs> I'm putting the right now. I, I knew I it was Cinco de Mayo because so, you were there for the conversation. No, like no yeah. one told me this. Seriously. All right. So now we have the state set. We'll be live streaming on Instagram. Uh, actually, that's what. What? Yeah. <laughs> all right. It'll I'll put all time. day down. What's the What's the uh, location town name? Just so I can put. That's still in the air. All right. Question mark. All right. Yeah, have a good that day then. Well, I would fucking hope so. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> He's a busy man. Yeah, he's, oh, yeah. A, he's an artist. Especially when it's holidays between uh, St. Patrick's Day and Halloween, pretty much. Special notes here. We want to thank Coop Tea for providing us with some peach tea lemonade flavor. I'm really excited for this one. By Oh, yeah. We've had it before. It was fantastic. Wait. Kayla made us some Deep Eddie Vodka Punch. And that recipe is on Instagram. So make sure you check us out on Instagram.com slash We're Not Afraid of the Dark. No apostrophe there. And stickers. We still have a lot of stickers. We need to make like, uh, <laughs> like you, you know how like you would watch like the TV shows of like, okay, today we're going to make, you know, this uh, rotisserie chicken, blah, 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 with, with like <laughs> green beans and all this. Shit. We'll, Are we'll, we talking about corresponding recipes to our shows? Yeah, we'll, we'll fucking make a... Uh, Rachel Ray with yeah, this. Yeah, we'll make a video of you making podcast <laughs> punch. Yeah, well, there we I, go. I said that to Kayla last night. I said, could you make a special punch for every single episode that we do Christ. Yes. <laughs> yeah although i i tell you what we need to make i, I wanted us to try to reproduce the green slime and have a drink so, so we drink green slime um start with that green hawaiian punch i was gonna make a green drink for saint patty's day i was gonna do the deep eddy lemon with um blue carousel club soda and muddled mint so we need to hold on nice. do, do they still make those jammers the kool-aid jammers Yes. Yeah. Fucking, you need to make something with them then. Wait, was that the one that came in that uh, the squeeze? Yeah, that's yeah. Not, like, oh yeah, that shit just brought my socks off. Can we just say that now there's this thing out that says if you poke the top of the lid back into it that it seals it, and I don't. It believe does not that. seal it. No. Wait, what? Yeah, I don't know. That, you know how it has that... that T on the on the top of it? They said if you hook it into the hole, that it stops it, like it seals it up, so d- liquid can't get out of it. And it's fake. It's false. Like beyond belief, fact or fiction. Like false. <laughs> They've been talking about this show all, all day, by the way, because we had that special episode on KNA TV Day, me and Kayla's podcast, where Ben was with Kayla watching Beyond Belief because she had never seen it before. Oh, let that me was tell one you. one of our favorite shows of the 90s. April 28th, there's uh, a Comic Con in Philly, and Jonathan Frakes yeah. is going to be there. Too bad Beyond Belief only put out season one on DVD because. He was host from two to four, and I would have him rather than sign something Star Trek, sign Beyond Belief. But he's not the host of season one. By the way, we are recording this before that date, but yeah, I, I saw that Beyond Belief is on Amazon Prime Video. It's, it's all the seasons on there, and I, and I you can't have an autograph for Amazon Prime because <laughs> it's intangible. But right, no, um, I'll, I'll find you a Beyond Belief poster. For Christmas, by the way. Fucking Jonathan Frakes better sign it. And James Brolin. I think James Brolin's dead. Yeah, last Christmas. <laughs> well, steep order, baby. <laughs> oh, no. It was your birthday last year where I gave you the uh, Commando original yeah. poster from yeah. 1985. It's still in the dining room, actually. It is. Is it hung up? Not I yet. got no space. Yeah, that thing's massive. I mean, and it's a to real be honest, poster. the ones in the hallway are going to come down at some point, too. What? We're grown-ups. We, we can't live like oh, we're no, in GameStop no, no, no. forever. If you we walk, didn't talk about if this. If you walk into bed, it actually is loaded. It's like a comic book store almost, I think. Because you guys got like <laughs> massive like, wall-to-wall video games, movie posters. Like, well, you can't. in all fairness, you can't see the video games immediately. It yeah, almost looks like a normal house for a second. I mean, then again, you guys are having people there who know, know you and know your lifestyle. Yeah, so. they know know who we are yeah it's not you have an airbnb or something like that where somebody's gonna steal your shit right yet 
They better not. Hey, I, I, you guys could always rent out the ferret room as a uh, Airbnb, right? Yeah, once they once they all pass. <laughs> I think you just get some more. No, ben, we're Ben's done had, getting new ones. Ben's pretty much had ferrets since like what two thousand two thousand one. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, maybe even nineteen ninety nine. Mm-hmm. We are at the tail of the carved stone. Now, I didn't ask this in the last one, but did you guys remember this episode at all? No. I mm-hmm. recognized it once I saw the actors in it. I didn't recognize it by name at all. Well, yeah, no. I I didn't <sighs> recognize the name, but when they went, when she went to the shop, I it felt familiar. Mm-hmm. I feel like I remember well, seeing that. It felt familiar because Sardo is in it. Yeah, that's the same shop. I think it was the same outside, uh, exterior shot as well, right? Yes. Wasn't it Sarto? Emphasis yeah. on the toe? No, dough. Oh, Sarto. Yeah, he's going to ask that Emphasis that on the dough. Uh-huh. <laughs> the episode starts out with Tucker and Frank's rivalry continue, and Tucker has to be the most fucking annoying Minnesota Society member I've ever met for. Guys agree? He is a little bit over the top, but I feel like that was probably kind of the way it was meant to be, he's the annoying little brother that they got stuck with. Everyone has one. Oh, yeah? Everyone has <laughs> one? Huh? Well, hear, that, hear, that, hear that, Adam? Well, everyone actually, has the annoying yeah, brother. Well, yeah. Well, she, she said younger brother, and I'm the only one in this room who has a younger brother. That's, Ashley has a sister, I and Kayla a has an older brother. brother. No, no. I mean, like, what, every, you do? every yeah. group has the annoying. Who, like, who is this? Well, His name's Eric. He lives off. in Alabama. I, I never knew this. I'll probably meet him at the wedding then, right? Uh, probably not. Okay, never mind then. <laughs> he doesn't talk to me. Ah, oh, very well then. The Midnight Society comes in, they see a dark figure. Frank <laughs> says, it has to be Gary, but when has Gary ever fucking worn a prop? Like, that was Kristen's job for a while there, right? Well, yeah, Kristen, but Kristen and, uh, Daniel, they have a baby on the way. Oh. Who? 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 who it was Kristen and who left? <laughs> Eric. Oh, not, not Eric. Yeah, David. David. Yeah, they got a baby on the way. Fucking, she can't wear no props. <laughs> she's maturity clothes. Yeah, well, Gary appears behind them, and they find out that that person is actually like a scarecrow type of being, and he was the one who did it. Sam asks what it is. He says he found it in a truck in his dad's store. It was worn by a strange order of monks, and the legend was truly, and I, I had a hard time hearing what the fuck he said after that. Did you guys know what he said? No. No, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll tell you, our notes were scarce because we were <laughs> wrestling with our cat who's in heat, <laughs> yeah, fucking drinking. Yeah, Ben has a photo of the cat like right on top of his laptop watching his episodes. No, she's not on a laptop. Oh, was she was that? sitting in front of it watching. Okay. Hey, well, we are we we posting that? We're posting that on Instagram. Um, yeah. once Kayla shows me the app to be able to. Fiddle okay, with yeah, it. It, it'll be on Instagram probably before this uh, episode, but. Yeah, I hooked up my laptop <clears throat> to our TV, so the laptop was open on the floor, and she kept walking over there. I heard that. Usually, that's me that's mm. clanging over here. <laughs> um, yeah, she was sitting there watching it on the laptop while we were watching it on the TV. Funniest thing, so we had to take a picture, but she looked at us just as we were doing it. Yeah, I mean, my notes are very scarce on a lot of these, like the bookish babysitter. I really didn't have much for it because it was so much going on. Mm-hmm. It was all over the place. Like, what What do you say? Well, that's why you did big nets. You have to look at this as academics. Yeah. Well. Like, Kayla, how many pages did you have? One page. All right, never mind then. Yeah, I have mine on Google Docs. Gary says it had the power to take over minds and control forces of nature. He bends down with the gate and says... Obviously, they're not around anymore, but he has an idea. What if they have so much power that they can learn how to control the one thing that makes them dangerous forever? Time. Now we're transported to this girl, Allison. Do you guys recognize her? Mm-mm. She's in another oh, dark episode, like one of the worst ones. It was his badge, which is the last one of season five, I think. Well, we are not even close. Yeah, yeah. She was also in that movie, Andre. You guys remember that with the I seal? I do. I loved that movie. It was a true story. Oh, it was? Yes. I don't remember watching that since like 95, I think. Oh, my God. It was, it was a true long. story. All right. Well, I was thinking of some other like 90s shows or movies that no one talks about anymore. Monkey Trouble. You guys remember that one with that fucking girl who finds that monkey? And I do to remember that one. Mm-hmm. I remember Dunks and Checks In. 
Oh, I would yeah, fucking that, love that right movie. That, right <laughs> that shit movie. down. Fuck. Monkey Trouble, Dunstan checks in. Uh, Baby Stay Out was there like been nice here, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good movie. That's on Amazon Prime or Netflix I liked right Blank now. Check. Yeah, yeah Blank, uh, Blank Check I always yeah. liked. Especially because it has like the Macintosh has like uh, a special uh-huh. figure in it. Now, when Ben and I were looking for movies to do, uh, the Three Ninjas thing has since aired, but the Dennis the Menace sequel, I never knew existed. I still don't watch that, Ben. Me either. Mm-mm. But I'll tell you, the, the better one is the first one. <laughs> oh, sure. Um, yeah, that the Three Ninjas was won by a fucking landslide. Like, we posted that on Instagram, and like, like 30 people liked it. But they didn't give any, like they didn't they didn't cast a vote. Like okay, you know, you just take the two seconds to like, oh, you know what, fucking do you know do pre hysteria? Like we we had all of like six people say, oh, do three ninjas, and three ninjas is what won. Although, have you seen the three ninjas with Paul Kogan? I have the poster for it in my closet, but I don't have Where space the fuck you get to put at? it up. Where did you find that piece of shit? Oh, Eric. fuck. Yeah, Eric gave it to me. <laughs> Eric's one of our long-time friends, by the way. They always uh, bug on us. I'm like, I remember you got him because they have on DVD. For yeah, around, like, well, we, we always give each other like just mm-hmm. like the most novelty gifts. Well, my for... favorite was the fruitcake. Oh, dude, that fruitcake. We've was... still got one in the freezer. No, tell, tell that story, please. The, well, the fruitcake gets passed around every every Christmas, right? So you keep the same damn fruitcake. And we passed the same one around for a good like six years and uh when i was in the military you know i had to call mom up and be like hey i need you to do me this favor go in the freezer and wrap (laughs) wrap the fruitcake up in like a brown paper bag and twine and go put it in eric's mailbox and just put from afghanistan on it so he went to take a picture of it with him and his dog toby who only has three legs but he's since passed on from you know like he's passed away now but the dog took a bite out of the fruitcake and he told me the dog (laughs) took a bite out of the fruitcake i was like you might want to fucking take him to the hospital because that thing's like six years old Uh, oh my god (laughs) (laughs) now you see i I thought i read this article a a few years ago where these guys actually did do the same kind of thing and it it went off like 50 years i mean it was just a joke well we would sign it Mm -hmm. we'd sign it like a ben you know 2008 eric 2009 like there were like it was cataloged who had it that year well did you guys get a new fruitcake at least yes it's in the it's the one in the freezer right now oh so that's still going to rail so that's been like you got out of the military like 2012 yeah okay so six years ago all right so this is the hopefully this was gonna go on his new dog won't eat it hopefully or he has kids now he's got yeah kids now so don't let them chew on that's a pricier bill (laughs) yeah will be we have this plot of what we've seen before with the, the new kids in town. So Allison is the new kid on the block. Gary mentions that she's trying to fit in, has some issues. We find out she's an artist because we see that uh, easily with a little drawing there that doesn't play any plot device. He says that she's going to learn how dangerous making new friends can be. And she's openly admitted she hates the place. She sees something TJB was here on like the desk. She looks outside, sees the kids walking by and drops something. She knocks, then runs down. It's like a pair of gag glasses. Like, who the fuck, like, just w- up and walks around with so like, sinking glasses on them? These popular kids. Well, she has to go and find some new ones to get back to them because she stepped on them or something. She finds the Magic Mansion, which, of course, is owned and run by the infamous Sardo. You see, I wrote down, <clears throat> as soon as you hear... Okay, but I'm losing on the deal. You yeah. know, uh-huh. you know it's Zardo, and uh, <laughs> yeah, he's negotiating the price with somebody in the back or on the phone or something like that. I'm gonna have to use. Uh, we're bringing that shit back. We're gonna bring that saying back. Okay, but I'm losing on the deal. Yeah, but also, I today I seriously am going to email Richard Dumont and try to get this fucking show. Okay, and he better be drinking while he's on the show, but with us. You're gonna get him down to Chris Field. <laughs> or just do it on Skype. It, it'd be better for him if he did it on Skype. That or we do a remote recording in Canada. 
we'll just take a, a short little road trip. It, 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 me There's, and Kayla just drove to Key West in Florida. Short off. little road yeah. trip. Well, me and Kayla drove to Key West. It actually will take us less time, I think, to drive to Canada. Right? Probably. We want to go to Canada. Yeah. I want to go to Key West. Shit. We're the best of both worlds. Hey, baby, you need a passport. <gasps> Not for Key West. Well, for Canada. Well, funny, Why do you think well, I want to go to Key West? Well, when we're down to Key West, uh, we, we found out there's some kind of trip to go to Cuba. So I'm like, Kayla, we got to go to Cuba. I want to smoke a cigar unless it's Havana. In they're, Havana. They're I'm getting get the, they're getting it like up and coming. It's not okay. It's not out yet. Yeah, but it's only 90 miles from Cuba. I can see it was a binoculars probably. We also uh, hear, while Sardo is negotiating the back, this guy, he... This guy threatens to go to Uncle Bebo, which you find it's a rival. And he's going to appear in a later episode. I, I completely forgot about that detail until I read that other night. Sardo comes out, starts fucking her name up, or she fucks his name up again. He cracks her. That's what she's looking for. He seems really proud of his inventory. She sees some gag glasses that are probably made in China. And starts digging around that uh, he keeps trying to sell it to her. He's always trying to upsell and have the customer walk out more than they actually need. She up and admits where the fuck she just li- she's living now. Like, what teenage girl is going to do that? That's true. I mean, Sardo seems like a pretty trustable character. Yeah. And what, well, my other question is, he how is the hell did he... not a stand-up he... guy. <laughs> well, I know he was in season two, but how the fuck did he get it out of that, like, crystal ball thing in season one with the Super Specs That's, that's a good question. <laughs> Plot to us, just multiple Sardos. Hold on now. Who's telling this story? This story is told by Gary. Okay. Who told Super Specs? Because... That was Gary as well. Okay. Well, then, that's fine. I'm just wondering, who's going to tell a story with Sardo in it, and Gary's not telling it? That happened in season two. What? Yeah, it did. That Zach was, baby that, that was the Dark picture. Dragon episode with in David. three seconds. Okay. Was it three seconds? I just uploaded that picture of Danger and Zach Baby liked it in like three seconds. So Zach we should tell baby. him, thank you, Zach Baby. Yes, and, and uh, by the way, Zach Baby's Are You Afraid of the Dark Rap is at the end of every episode in season three. And we'll post a link to the music video that was very, very unique. It's wonderful. Work of art. <laughs> He's an artist. Sardo tries to sell her some popularity potion. And that's going to wait. And I like, I like it. He gets this like little trunk out and says, I just bought, oh no. And then he corrects himself and says, I've been searching the world for this. He's looking around for things and says, oh, this is the potion. Uh, but he finds this like Egyptian friendship stone. He seems to like make things up as it goes along. And I'm surprised she never caught on to this. He asks for 50 bucks. She won't pay that. Then she, he says, Of course, how much you got? She says, $17.75. And then he says, Oh yeah, I'll take it. But I'm losing on the deal. But he just said that. Like, that's just lazy writing. He could have said that in another way. <laughs> you know what I mean? But no, that's it. That's his saying. All right. So he says a forever sale customer. Yes. We should bring that back. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Right. We Absolutely. Should. All, the time. All right. We'll, we'll start doing that and start doing Instagram <laughs> live. Right? We see one of those Monk Illuminati guys as she walks out. Okay. Let me stop you right there. <laughs> okay. Did anybody write down the spell, though? I, I couldn't understand it. He's like, no, oh, God. Amrak, the Julian, Ra. Ra, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so. She couldn't tell he was pulling that what, out of his ass. Who did that guy remind you of, Adam? Coma San Diego. <laughs> I, I could beat that. Um, Zorro. No. I thought Zorro with the hat. Oh, mm-hmm. you guys. Man, no. Oh, Darwin Duck. N- no. That's a good one, though. You got to bet that. That yes. is a good one. Yeah. Darkwing <laughs> Duck is good. However, <laughs> Kayla, who did this guy remind you of? Was it someone from gonna, Beyond Belief? I'm Don't gonna, put her on the spot. No. I'm going to blow all y'all fucking minds right now. <laughs> okay. My thought was Zoro. <laughs> Judge Doom. Who the fuck is that? What? Judge Doom. Adam, look it up right now. Oh, he's on. Oh, he's a Roger picture. Rabbit. Judge motherfucking doom. Oh, you know who oh. I said? Oh, I, yeah, I see yeah. it now. <laughs> but but I'll tell you. Okay. I wouldn't fucking know his name, but I'll tell you another one. Isn't that, doesn't know the guy, that, that villain at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark? Yes. That, Is that picture same guy? right in the middle of no. your screen right now looks just like him. Oh, uh, yeah. I know. It's one motherfucking down. Judge Doom right there. Wait, well, yep. I got the door here. What, what is the name of that long ass hat that, that that guy has on this? Oh, hell, episode? I don't know. I'm not sure. 
Yeah, but, I, want, I want to see those big hats on females for like Kentucky Derby. <laughs> Those are so, so those are different derby hats. hats. All right. Yeah, so all of my notes say Judge Doom on it, not whatever the fuck. Bro- Brother Septimus is his name. Septimus, yeah, yeah. No, it all says Judge Doom in my notes. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll bring this up in a, a few minutes here, but uh, going along with the storyline here, a group of teams meets her at her front door. And this one girl's like a complete bitch. She's like, you brought us here because you got fake glasses? But the guy seems to be nice. It's like I got a crush on her. And I, I, my main gripe with this episode, I want to see more of this interaction with her and these teens. You want to see more Daw- Dawson's Creek, and yeah. and less Who Framed Roger Rabbit. The place at Sardo is vandalized. The Illuminati guy is talking in Sardo's voice. That when she went back, there's an interesting camera angle there. I kind of liked where it's kind of Brother Simpsons up front. He asked her to leave because, of course, he's talking from Sardo's voice, and he yeah. asked for the amulet, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, did you guys see the old school Mac Till in the background? No. Nope. Yeah, the old school Apple Macintosh in the but background of that. You caught a prop, didn't you, in this one? No, it was the sewing machine one. What the fuck episode was that? Oh, we were watching sewing man, machine. Man, we were fucking watching Beyond Belief. We had done told you we <laughs> binged the shit out of it. Yeah, it was mind. a whole different but, series. Okay, actually, how'd you get that confused with Ari Fade the Dark? I, I did. did. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm starting to feel this, all this fucking hoop tea and all this Deep podcast Eddie. punch. punch. Man. Thanks, Steve Eddie. Christ. Oh, speaking of which, I'm at, I'm at that Steve Eddie. So, put me up some hoop tea. Again, from Baxter Brewing Company. I'm right behind him. I hope you're ready. Yeah, we got the peach tea lemonade. They have a few other flavors out there. And I strongly prefer this over Twisted Tea, by the way. Oh, yeah. And I like how I'm actually, I have a Twisted Tea QZ. I'm like, Jesus, I got electronics here, man. <laughs> I like that shit. There's a um, piece of aluminum stuck right. to the thing. That's got, why it's squirting right. everywhere at the bottom. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, we've got a squirter. No, my shit's wet, right? Okay. All right, there we go. We got trash came back there. Damn, I'm all messy with this. All right, hold on. Some, somebody's having a napkin. That. What's a napkin? <laughs> napkin. Hold on. All right. Adam, you're going to want ice. Use your, in your shirt. Cup. Shit. Baby. You're Keep it going. Ice. Yeah, you want ice too. It would have been fine. That'll squirt out fine. That's what he said. Oh. I wish got like the the bar tag set up over here right now. All right, so good old hoop tea. Now, did you guys recognize the actor oh, playing man. this brother Simpsons guy? Christopher Lloyd. No. It's... No. <laughs> Christopher Lloyd played Judge Doom. Get off me. Oh, yeah. Well, this this guy's name is Frank uh Gorson. He played the Riddler on the original Batman with Adam West back okay. in the sixties. Yeah, he was like a really big actor at his time. <laughs> yeah, he died a number of years ago, but he was like a really, really well known actor. Yeah, those those eyes were dead as shit. They oh were. yeah. Well he he played a lot of villains. He was like looking in my thing. eyes, man, they're bloodshot as fuck. <laughs> Well, see, what killed me was the eyes weren't even that red. They were like really, really red around them, and mm-hmm. he just had like these really blue eyes. Yeah, and I'm like, real... wait, what's wrong but with they that? Were they were, they they were creepy. But oh, here's another thing: uh, the Reverend Jack Cheese. Do you remember that character from Ren and Stimpy? And okay. no, but I'm wearing a Ren and Stimpy shirt. Yeah, well, right he, now. He, he did the voice for that character. Yeah, Ben has this shirt on right now. What's this again? It's yeah. Action Toast. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Power Toast Man. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Kayla, take a picture of that shirt so we can put it on Instagram. Yeah, we're very active on that page. Well, she doesn't give him the amulet. It just leaves. And then he, well, he asks the real Sardo where's that? He's a sword engineer girl. Mentions that he tells where she lives on Maple Lane and the big brick house or something like that. Yo, I Brown just had, brick house. I just had a thought. I need a pencil. <laughs> yeah, let me That's get that. her pen. Take his pencil and let her have her pen. Yeah. <sighs> Keep going because it. this is going to be a while before we hit this. All right. Well, she. She says that this is an Egyptian stone back in her bedroom that she has with Dada. She throws it and like she sees back in time in the mirror to this like nerdy kid right with a quill. Ralphie. Ralphie from Christmas Story? Yes. I had something better. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> but Ralphie from Christmas Story is good. The glasses, everything is Un- spot on. Until he started talking. That's true. Like until she gets in there with him. Do you know what he reminded me of? His voice reminded me of Kevin from Home Alone. <laughs> nice. We always imagine uh, that, Adam, that movie. What do you so got? we've got Christmas Story. All right. Home Alone. Who do you remind you of? Oh, uh, Mick is from uh, Boy Meets World. Ah, oh, fucking love that show. Oh, yes. How about, how about that? <laughs> well, shit. Ashley was showing me something to, about Topanga 
the other day. It was just a picture I'm, I'm of sorry. Him. I'll go and admit this. If we ever tackle really every episode of Boy Meets World, I really didn't think the panga was that attractive. You should have seen this picture. I mean, she, yeah, in a later <laughs> year, she got the way. But yeah. like, Danielle Fischel is right. smoking. I mean, she She's got like hot got when the she cute turned thing well, and the like. You gotta, damn. Well, the thing is, like, when she was fourteen, like I, I was there. You at, can't beat well, off to her at fourteen. You got to wait what? until she's uh, older. All right. Well, what, well, keep my bad. Oh, I was watching that show. I was twelve. Fourteen. Gotcha. Right. <laughs> so that's exactly what you were doing. All at right. So, so, yeah. So here's here's what happened. I watched Bull Meets World when it first came out. Okay. So they were like two years older than me. So I'm younger than them. And like. At that age, like you're looking for older girls, like I just didn't think she was hot back then. I was more to my girl back there, whose autograph is on that poster. And that's Jody Sweden, who plays Stephanie Tanner on Full oh. House. Sorry, that's my that's my <laughs> girl. Mm. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm she's sorry. hot. Oh no, she's oh. she's cute. Okay, okay. Yeah. she cannot even oh, oh, stand no. next well, to her, her and Hillary Duff. The, they're, they're my crushes. No. I like how I got you the, the autograph, Jody Sweet. <laughs> Alex Mack, man. You know what this Alex is. Oh, yeah, Mack. she looks good. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> yes, she was gorgeous. Alex Mack. And uh, and uh, we have to give a special shout out to Blessed Jed Hart. Especially consider she was fucked up on drugs and alcohol and that maximum uh, shoot that she did on the cover. Perfect. Yeah, I saw the interview. After partying at the Playboy Mansion. All right, Ben, what do you got for this like nerdy character? I have the rich kid from fucking Little Rascals. Oh, yeah. I was. Okay. <laughs> I, I remember that scene at the end where it yep. says, You see, here my lawyer. Um, do, you, do you recognize the actor here, by the way? His name's John White. He's been in American Pies. Yeah, he plays uh, the cousin of the Stifler family, it's Eric Stifler. Very well. I was trying to find some more like early nineties stuff, and my my great peer was that this scene takes place. He's in like the eighteen nineties, and he's right with a fucking quill pen. Like they had ink pens by then. That's true. Yeah, that's that that quill pen's like six. Yeah, but you're you're more years. you're more cultured. Like the, here's the shot, Adam. Like the rich kid from. Yeah, Corey would have fucking blew his uh, load oh, in his pants. All right, to, this, to this, thing Dan, this thing with Daniel Fisher is like some BDSM uh, corset happening here. Is she, is she locked in for hands in the back? What's no, happening she's there? just sitting in a chair. Okay. But I tell you, mother was Daniel Harris. He played the little girl on Halloween 5 and she was uh, in Roseanne. She was Danielle or Harvest. Danielle? Danielle. Okay, I'm not sure who that is. I follow her on Instagram. Oh yeah, does she follow us back? Probably not. Follow us back? <laughs> yeah, it's gonna happen. <laughs> She picks up the stone and is kind of back in the present time. Brother Septimus is outside of her window just looking at his eyes. And, Where the fuck are the parents? Yeah, of course, this is was episode where the parents are just completely out there. There's just some creepy asshole. <laughs> it's like in the 60s. He's, he's like floating above the second story yeah. like, window. <laughs> and where the fuck are the parents at for this? Uh, it's about working at the theater. She falls back into the mirror. She's back in time and meets the kid who greets her with a slingshot. Like guy just has that like handy right on his desk. Of course, he complains that it's his room. She says, "This bitch is my room." Yeah, and she yeah. says, "What's the name?" He says, "Thomas Jefferson Bradshaw." Perfect. And then it says, it's "Grandma's house." He says, "It's March thirteenth, eighteen ninety-two," and she knows it sent her back in time. She does a Steven Spielberg reference. Get some there. of that hoopty. Oh, I'll, yeah, I'll pour myself. That's fine. You're still don't, sitting on it. Don't you worry. I'll pour myself one. They have a bond because <laughs> she finds out that his parents died, and she mentions that she's an only child too. And he says he has no friends because his grandmother doesn't let him out of the house. She has the idea of taking him to him in the future, and she seems really excited to show him a good time. Did you guys catch some sexual overtones here? No. I, I thought their friendship was a little awkward considering I we welcome have, it all. We, so. we have like a 16 year old girl with an 11 year old boy. I mean. Ashley, when you were 16, did you hang out with 11 year olds? No. When I was 16, yeah. I hung out with 20 year olds. But at the same time, <laughs> yeah. she really had nobody to hang out with, and this kid was in her mirror. That seems like a safe safe place. Yeah, whip yeah. out that little like She was yours. just happy to <laughs> have somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she was thinking about his pie. Oh, okay. Well, what's that noise? What noise? Papers, what noise? Uh, papers and booze. Stuff. So was she on Mr. Skin? Oh, that's a good question. No. <laughs> Was he on Mr. <laughs> no. I don't think Mr. Skin has guys on there, do they? I don't fucking know. Wait, well, 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 when, we the, when we're coming back from Key West, Kayla and I watched... Uh, I, I, she kind of hated it. Uh, Dewey that? Cox. Yeah, Dewey... 
Oh, dude, I love Dewey that's, Cox. I was laughing my ass off. That's completely underrated. Walk hard, yeah. Dude, I love Walk I Hard. I watch that at work Yo, at least the, every couple months. The, the final, like, his goodbye song. It's I so good. Love it. I can't even get through it without cracking And up. then right afterwards, it uh-huh. says he died 30 seconds after performing it. Dude, it's so funny. <laughs> well, my favorite part is when uh, not only when he cuts his brother in half with a machete, he's still talking to him. <laughs> <laughs> It is dead. But I, 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 well, I like the part where he's arguing with his wife and with the kids that are here. And she's like, he's like, well, I think I'm pretty doing pretty well for having a house and being 50 year old. So, like, <laughs> <take care." laughs> but the scene I'm, I'm thinking about is when he wakes the hotel rooms that guy with a small dick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who was that actor? So we can look about Mr. Skid because he would have been on there. I'm not oh, sure. Man. Yeah. I'm sure we could find it. It's worth a Google. Hmm. <laughs> Hear you that, David? Take care of that, Ashley, because I don't want that in my search browser history. I don't, I don't feel like we're using in the kind of mirror right now. <laughs> Who's the small dick guy in? <laughs> Just ask Siri. Kayla, what movies have you seen with full frontal male nudity? Ooh, good question. Uh, Well, Veronica. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, when was that? I don't remember oh my seeing god! That. Like the dream, she was having a dream, and it was her her dead dad was, oh yeah, and his that, ding ding. Oh yeah, house. yeah, that was pretty fucked up. What? And that's a foreign movie, by the way. It was all subtitles. So over there, I think it's a little more liberal than people want to censor everything in America. Why do you think all these horror movies right now are PG thirteen rather than R? Because there's not enough dick and balls. Yeah, you don't see um, <laughs> even hmm. breasts anymore. I don't see much in horror movies. It used to be oh, girls get naked all the time. Oh, uh, Hall Pass. Hall Pass. Uh, all right. With, well, uh, look up the actors. I'm going to continue this, but if you find someone, a male on Mr. Skin, let me know. And don't try to look like Will Ferrell or Kevin Hart or anybody. <laughs> yeah, because they, they haven't done it yet. They haven't stooped uh, yeah. so low. They open the door with Five Star Doe there. He comes in to warn them. This is pretty much like a Scooby Doo uh, thing that's about to come up here in a minute mm-hmm. where, like, they keep. Okay, Sardo's warning him about, you know, Judge Doom and uh, Brother Septimus. Oh, yeah, warning him about that. And then, okay, there he is. And then they start jumping through mirrors. Like the fucking chase scenes from Scooby-Doo where they're all (laughs) going out of this room and then they're coming out this door, this, that, and the other. Like, they're jumping fucking mirrors. Okay, he Mm -hmm. followed us into the past. We're going to jump through a mirror and go back to the future. Like, Ugh. Oh, I got another good reference for you. One of my favorite games on Sega was actually that Scooby Doo mystery game. Dude, I was just talking to Chris mm-hmm. about that shit. The Indeed guy, as some of you guys say. <laughs> um, I, I told him that, like, I have the one for Super. Where, yeah, like, that wasn't nearly as good. I mean, it same, wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't. The, the one for Super, you like start on like a ship or whatever. The one for Sega, you start in this log cabin in like winter and shit. I want to get it. This thing on eBay is going for like high. It's like forty bucks. Fuck that! Someone buy it? me that. How about I got a ROM of it? What the, is it? It was Scooby Doo for Sega Genesis. Oh, baby, I'll buy it for you. It was really cool. It was like this mini mansion. Can't justify uh, that, baby. I can. No. Yeah, it was like kind of mini mansion where you have like these type things of commands to go to, like how video games used to be back in the eighties. But it was really fun and like a lot of mystery and puzzle solving. They mentioned that brother uh, Septimus was supposed to be hanged in the fifteenth century. Did that come after him? Oh, you know what that cloak? Oh, no, it doesn't. I was going to say fucking reminded me of Mr. Boogity. I like how we have our girlfriends over there trying to look up for from uh, nudity. I ain't bothered with it. Yeah. I'm trying to find the guy with or, the little penis from Dewey Cox. <laughs> that's, see, how can I be offended by that, huh? Yeah, you see, that's not too, many, <laughs> that's not too often you hear a girl say, uh, I'm looking for the guy with a small penis. All right. Good you told to go. me to Google it. Yeah. I mean, my Google search history is already shot to hell. No, no, Same. Same. Nice. Please delete uh, this shit when uh, I so die. Just out of curiosity, what we have on there that needs to be uh, deleted. Tube eight. Um, well, to start with, I'm trying to look up the penis guy from the hotel room scene in Dewey Cox. Past that, I'll never tell. That's why I want somebody to delete it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas throws him the stone. She runs with Sardo. They find a ghost of time. Sardo says he wants to get past the demon person and turn that stone into the fortune. He's always worried about money. They decide to go to the mirror and they're grabbed by a brother of Sebus who comes out, goes to attack him, and asks for the amulet. Thomas comes out of the mirror with a slingshot again, takes glasses, and starts getting hypnotized by him. Okay. 
Adam, do me a favor real quick. While while we're talking about this, pull up that scene. Dave Foley. Is on Mr. Skin? Here. Oh, <laughs> shit. I'm going to see a dick. It Adam. says there are no small parts. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Dave Foley. Okay, so now we got to look up Dave Foley on Mr. Skin and see if it shows up. Um. So keep talking about it. All right, what what scene did you need? I need I need like the final confrontation. All right, this is where his uh Yeah, this is where he gets hypnotized. Okay. So we see him get to his knees, but Simpsons is kinda of saying something about how he's gonna kinda of take care of her and shit. He puts his glasses back on, but Thomas is still hypnotized down there. All right, I need when he pulls up well, like a, a shot of his glove before he pulls it off. He's got a glove there. All right, pulls- Okay. So, check it out. <laughs> he's pulls it off his ass. This like long, like metal thing on All his right. next finger. Do you know what that what that hit for me? What he's a motherfucking T one thousand. He's a fucking T one thousand. His glove was normal sized mm-hmm. until he pulled that fucking hand off. Like until he pulled it off, and now all of a sudden his fucking fingernail is like an extra seven claw. inches long. Yeah. Well, I, uh, well, he's a T one thousand, bro. Yeah, well, Allison jumps on his back, and then Thomas comes out of hypnotism already and says a slingshot at him. Sardo uh, sends his hand, and then they find out that Brother Symphus is stuck back in time and starts being extinguished. Yeah, there's this cheesy 90s effect here. Look at this. It, it would seem that there is no males nude on Mr. Skin. All right, yeah. All right, so. You might have to go to Mrs. Skin for that. Yeah, billion dollar idea there. Just start off, <laughs> say we're. Guys, bare naked. I mean, I want a billion dollars. There you go. Thomas finds out that he's, or they, Thomas explains that he can't come back, but he, he made a friend forever. And when she comes back in the present time, she does see a heart around their names on the bench now or the desk. Right. With friends forever written. That was quick. They knew it was sure for like fucking 10, uh, 10 minutes. Yeah, but it felt like 100 years. Get I mean, it? It was a hundred years ago. Yeah. Death. <laughs> they went through some shit. But Gary says that brother Simpsons were gone, and Allison will never forget the first new friend that she made at home. Final thoughts, everybody. I felt like it was better than the babysitter episode. Oh, I liked it more than the babysitter one. Fuck yeah. off! I liked it better. I liked babysitter better than this one. What? Yes. Even though Judge Doom was in it. And a T one thousand. I felt like I they still put like that way more into this one than that one. Yeah. You see, I, I felt like this w- had a little more like creepiness involved because just because that guy's dead eyes. Fuck off. No, the babysitter was uh, <laughs> corny. I mean, I, I was laughing to that, but I didn't laugh at this one. I literally wrote down like two <sighs> rows of notes on the babysitter one, and then I sat back. I was like, I can't. I just I, can't. I got nothing. I will say I have more notes for the carved stone than I do the babysitter. Because, because they gave you more. Don't, don't make me do this. <laughs> I'm sticking by the babysitter. There was... Well, that's, well, the babysitter could have been great if they would have... See, that, that's the problem. That, Made it that, different. There's only 24 minutes uh, uh, to tell a story. Okay, Ben, but will you admit this? And that, they knew that when uh, they started. All right, Ben, can you admit that this was the best Sardo episode so far? Yes, I will say that. Right. Maybe, baby, maybe they had to fucking show the, the Toys R Us shopping spree <laughs> the same day as this Are You Afraid of the Dark episode. Uh-huh. Huh? So th- this fucking kid has so a 30 minute planning? run through Toys R Us, got all these fucking. Throwing shit in the cart. Oh, by the way, Ben, I, I like to bring the reference because like that was like '80s kids' dream right there. Oh, that, dude, that yeah. thing. don't but, even fuck right. with me. Now, now since that's Toys, all I wanted. Well, Toys R Us is basically <laughs> bankrupt right now. Why yeah, the they're... fuck they they bring this back? Apparently, what? they're getting ready to close like all, all their of them. stores yeah. if they can't come up with something in the next couple days. They, they well, they have to go back to this. And like like I said, I may have mentioned this in a previous episode before, so they but they filed bankruptcy right. in like September. Well, actually, since you're my age, I'm sure you can remember this. Like back in the '80s, I remember going to Toys R Us and you could get video games, bikes, and I remember our parents would buy like. Uh, puzzles and board games like they had stuff for all ages yeah there. it was a wide array yeah of... well last time I went to Toys R Us it seemed like everything was there for like five years and younger yeah it was like Door the Explorer and shit yeah, hey we gotta go shit. there and clean up 
Oh, that's there, what I'm saying. Those deals are going to be fucking outrageous. Yeah, if they say they're closed and we're going to go buy lots of stuff and sell it. Fuck. Then again, if anybody else for Toys R Us, this was <laughs> us, or KB Toy Stores. Yeah, or, just yeah. KB. Yeah. So KB's been gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but we still need some sponsorships. So reach out to us at We're Afraid of the Dark at gmail.com. Again, everybody, please leave us a review on iTunes, where you listen to your podcast, Facebook, same address, just look us up. Look here from everybody. Wait, I had two questions. What? You don't let me talk at all. You got to speak <laughs> up. Yeah, okay, we'll, get we'll, in we'll this. But yeah. it's like rude to talk over you gotta people. You got to push in. Yeah, push in there. Shit. <laughs> it's my job as the producer of the show to keep the show moving forward. Okay. Well, one was when the group of kids came over her house. Christ sake. Me too. That was... How did and they know? I, like, yeah. How, she's like, oh, like I guess she called them and she's going to give them like, a new pair of glasses. How I'm like, she call how them? the fuck do you even know like their numbers and everything? And they like yeah. just came over her house. No, I completely agree. They got there fully expecting See, something. The and one, was like, the guy what, was this? nice. See, that's the guy why, was cute. He that's, was. That's why Bookie's babysitter is better. Fucking no. plot holes all over this one. No, <laughs> no. And also when she said, who am I, Madonna? Like, <laughs> what do we, we say now? Like, at least on, <laughs> hey, what do we say now? I lo- at least on Who Framed Roger Rabbit, you get to see <laughs> Jessica Rabbit Beyonce? Snapper. Huh? What? What? Nothing. Snapper? <laughs> I heard Snapper. <laughs> yeah, something smells like fish. It's not your mom. <laughs> not here. Oh, shit. <laughs> Hookman reference. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, about that. <laughs> okay, please contact us. We're not afraid of the dark at gmail.com. Instagram, we're not afraid of the dark. Facebook, we're not afraid of the dark. And uh, bye. Bye. <laughs> God damn. Are you 